Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Dario Gutierrez. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. You were in the molecular biology, molecular but physiology, physiology and biophysics. biophysics. Thank you. Tell me what you did while you were here at Vanderbilt. So I actually worked in Alyssa Hastie's lab. Um, I think she had been here for maybe four, four or five years when I joined her lab. I was uh, the third student, I think, okay. if that's accurate. Um, so yeah, she had just started working on, on what the effects of obesity were on um, type 2 diabetes and how the immune system linked to all that. So I ended up in Alyssa's lab by, by, almost by accident. So I wanted to come here and be a structural biologist. I wanted to work with Walter Chase, actually. Um, I ended up doing my third rotation with her. Um, it was completely outside of my expertise because I worked in um, chemistry for my undergrad and did some research as well in biochemistry. So obesity and immune system were completely different. But that was exciting too for me and ended up learning quite a bit in the first few months of the rotation. Um, loved the lab, loved her as a mentor. Um, and yeah, I think I made one of the best decisions to join that lab. My work there really focused on trying to figure out um, if I could prevent macrophages or, or monocytes from coming into the fat and to see what the effects of this would be on, on the development of obesity as well as um, type 2 diabetes. Um, most of my hypotheses were wrong, actually. So um, uh, the first few molecules that I started studying were not that important in controlling macrophage um, infiltration in the fat. But following the biology, I, I ended up finding out that eosinophils uh, were accumulated in the fat when um, we knocked out a chemokine receptor called chemokine receptor 2. Um, and then I spent some time trying to figure out exactly what the cells were doing there. And I think there's somebody in the lab still following up on that work. I also worked on complement 5 and to try to figure out what the role of complement 5 was within this process. Again, got a bit lucky there. We found a pretty interesting phenotype and I think Alyssa's lab is still trying to figure out exactly why. <laughs> so what did you do after Vanderbilt? So after Vanderbilt, I moved to Germany. I decided to go to Heidelberg, Germany for, for my postdoc. Um, this was moving into a lab that was very strong in, in immunology. So here I think I got a very strong physiology and kind of dabble in immunology, but it, I wasn't really trained as an immunologist move, moving forward, and, and this was the field that I was very interested in. Um, so I joined the lab of, of a guy um, called Hans Reimer Rodeval, um, and there I basically did a lot of immunogenetics. Um, started working with a lot of mouse models and Ended up figuring out what the role of mast cells were in type 1 diabetes, as well as the role of mast cells in type 2 diabetes. Um, followed some findings in, in another mouse model that led me to studying um, mucosal immunology um, and what the role of ILCs was on um, the development of obesity in type 2 diabetes. Okay. Um, from there, I moved to um, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I was recruited by a biotech company, a startup, to start their immunology team. Um, I think when I joined, I was employee number four of that company. It's pretty scary, but it was, it was cool. It's a great experience. Um, and there basically I was in charge of trying to develop the technology that they wanted to, to eventually try to move into the clinic with. Um, this was a microbiome company. Um, they were interested in studying how individual bacteria could be used as um, anti-inflammatory or anti-autoimmune agents. Um, and so I did a lot of the work on developing the early platform, how to use human cells to, 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 to study this, the cells. And then as my group grew, we started looking at uh, preclinical models of um, atopic diseases and autoimmune diseases and see if this bacteria actually had efficacy. Um, and I cannot tell you more than that because the company's still <laughs> ongoing. Um, but that went really well. Uh, and by the time I left the company, I think we were around 50 employees or more. And so um, the company has grown since then, has raised a lot of money. Then I was recruited to Merck, which is the current position that I have. Um, and at Merck, I lead the immunology team in the Cambridge site. Um, and basically, I'm in charge of setting up all the scientific strategy um, for my group, um, hiring everyone and, and trying to figure out how we can be very innovative and do drug discovery, okay. immunology drug discovery. Gotcha. So how is that a good fit for you personally, like with your skill set and with your interests? So I actually never thought it would be a good fit. Um, I was actually looking today at our, um, the presentation that we had. I was one of the guys that wanted to be a faculty member when I came. Yes. I was one of the ones that during the exit interview wanted to be a faculty member. So I never thought about moving into industry. Um, and actually I was offered a faculty position before I, before I moved there, but it was a bit anticlimactic. 
Um, I think I like change a lot, and 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 industry certainly gives you that. Um, I was joking today with my lab mates that I always change benches every six months or a year because I got bored of being the same one. So that kind of fits my personality in a way we, everything happens really fast. Um, you're always just trying to find the most innovative way or the best way to actually ask a question. Um, from one respect, I'm still doing a lot of R&D. Science is, is my passion and, and, and the group that I'm leading is strongly working on basic science, um, basic immunology. Um, and I, and I'm, I've always been interested in the business aspect of things. And when you think about um, R&D in industry, you don't, don't think about just doing cool science, but you think about be, doing cool science that is impactful. And impactful can be impactful in several different ways. You're affecting patients' lives, um, and you want to benefit patients', patients lives. More than anything else, you have to bring this drug to the market if, if you're going to work on it. Um, and that just requires billions of dollars of investment, uh, tens of years of time to get that there. So you need to know that what you're working on will be impactful, both from a market perspective and from a patient perspective, there's an unmet need. Um, so thinking about science in that context, I think gives it a completely different meaning that I did not understand before when I was just doing basic research mm -hmm. um, in academia. And I'm, I'm glad that I, I found this opportunity and I don't think I could ever go back. So um, did you feel equipped in any way at each transition, or were there skills to, to, to gain um, as you went? I think I was, at every transition I made, I was definitely not equipped as much as I would have liked to in order to take on that position. But okay. I think that was part of what has made me successful is the fact, the ability to adapt very fast um, and to learn on the go. Um, I think every time you make a career transition, um, you're going to find yourself um, in a completely new environment, like fish out of the water. And, it is on you how well you adapt to it. Um, even moving from academia to a startup, a startup is a completely different animal. Moving from a startup to a large pharmaceutical company is completely different. The skill sets that you require are different. Um, and I, I, I think just adapt quickly, try to find mentors that can really teach you along the way how to get there. And it hasn't been that big of a problem. So you're doing some hiring? You're doing in that role? Yes. How, what are you? Um what do you look for in a successful candidate? What are some things that you wish maybe candidates knew as they apply? Yeah, so you know, I was asked that a lot yesterday um, you? with a lot of the trainees that, that are hoping to move into industry. So I think some of, some of the most successful people that actually ended up getting a job in, in my group um, were very confident. They knew their science very well, but they were not arrogant. Um, and they had a, so first of all, everybody that applied was, or most people that applied were qualified. So you need to have all the basic things, very strong publications. You need to show that you have adapted to perform very well in different environments. And I think it's, that's really important because in industry, you shift projects very often and right. you can be doing an immunology pro project working on T cells, the next day you might be working on neutrophils. Um, and so your ability to adapt to the new environment is, is very important. Uh, but more than anything, I like people that have a passion for science, um, that are very positive and that know that once 99 experiments fail, that they're going to continue to come every day to work um, with the same positivity. And that one time when it works, like, it just makes their day and they cannot even go to sleep. Um, and I think you're able to tell that in the personality. I think for us, it's very important to have people that have a very high EQ. Um, it's extremely important when you're in industry. And so people need to be a really good fit um, culturally. And uh, it, I think if basically a well-rounded person, if they have all that, um, they're likely in my group. Okay, good. Okay, sort of as your last question, um, what would your words of wisdom be to current graduate students and postdocs as they hop on the job market? <sighs> to, to really think outside the box. Um, so I think if my experience is, is any example, um, I never thought about going to industry. Um, and, and the reason why I didn't is because I was not exposed to it as I was a grad student. But um, there's basically the conception that we have of industry is different than what it really is once you're in there. To just keep your options open. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're still a grad student or a postdoc, you just do your best, um, work hard, uh, because that's actually going to translate into anything that you do past right. that. Awesome. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. You're welcome.